So, I've met Niall Horan twice. What? <laughs> so I've had a lot of you request me to do a video about just meeting him, like not the whole Sydney trip, just about me actually meeting him. Just try and mind the inevitable tears and snot which will be coming out of every orifice of my entire body. And try not to lose any respect for me. Too late? Thought so. Right, cool, let's just get started. <laughs> I flew up to Sydney for a week by myself. It was insane, it was scary. I have never even caught a bus by myself before. I didn't even go to my own town by myself. So going to a big city in another state, a long, long, long way away from home is just like, that in itself is just, Niall was doing a small world tour for his Flickr sessions and he was doing super intimate gigs, like between one and 2,000 people for each gig. It was insane. 1,200 people in all of Australia and New Zealand combined got to see Niall on his first show ever by himself. And I was one of them. Now that in itself is a bizarre, crazy, insane dream come true. Like that is just, that's so cool. The fact that I had that experience is just like, oh. But, but, but that wasn't it. I'm already starting to get like jittery and shaky and excited. <laughs> I was driving home one night. I had the radio on and I was listening to Nova. Basically he said, we're giving away a meet and greet to meet Niall Horan. All you have to do is jump over to our Facebook page and watch Ice Melt for three hours. Now he didn't actually say three hours, but Ice melts not very quickly. And I was like, okay, cool, I am done. I'm gonna win this. I got home very quickly, didn't break any laws. That's bad, don't do that. I got home really quickly and I went on Facebook straight away and I was like, right, I have got this, I am prepared. And I got on the Facebook page and they had a Facebook live video and it was quite literally a block of ice. And you had to try and guess what picture was under the ice. Now, mama didn't raise no quitter and I was like, from the moment I got on, the ice was just, all you could see was a white screen because it was just ice. I was literally just commenting everything that came into my head because no one knew what it was, but the first person that got the right answer was the one that won the prize. And I was like, right, I'm just gonna go for it. Like there was no limit that you could do. So I was just, I was ready. I was just like, my fingers were like, and so that's the story of how I spent the next three and a half hours of my life watching ice melt. <laughs> it kind of sounds a bit weird now that I think of it. But hey, it got me to meet Niall, so call me weird all you want. Eventually you could start seeing the ice melt and you kind of get glimpses here and there and I was freaking out. I was panicking because I was like, okay, I kind of know what it is. Just commenting everything I possibly could and I it was... It was stress. I was stressing out. There were 20,000 odd comments. There were people from all over Australia commenting as much as I had, who had equally as little life as I had. It was a Friday night and we were all just sitting here commenting on a video on Facebook of ice melting. <laughs> we were all trying to watch ice melt so we could have the opportunity to meet Niall. When you put it that way, it makes it sound a little bit less pathetic that we were all watching ice melt. I'm just gonna tell myself that. But I was not gonna give up. I was not going to give up the opportunity to try and meet the guy that I have had literally plastered onto my walls for the past six years. That came out a lot more scary than I had planned. Actually, no, it sounds just like it is. And then all of a sudden, the competition ended really abruptly. The video just finished and I was like, what's happening? Someone's got the right answer. It's not me. I quit. Like, what is my life? I hate my life. What is going on? I had literally commented thousands of times. Like, I'm pretty sure every second comment was mine. And by this stage, we all knew what the picture was because you could see it almost clearly. But you had to get pretty much the specific wording down pat. And a lot of us had said really, really similar things. So it was really just a matter of down to who had said it in the right way and who had said it first. I was pretty positive that I hadn't gotten the exact answer because there were people that were giving really, really detailed things like write down. The picture was him holding a Nando's bag on a soccer field in Sydney. But there were people that were commenting like the color that he was wearing and the stance he was in and what photos the photos were photoshopped from. Like they had gotten everything right down to the details of the Nando's bag had something that said, take me home on it. And I was like, oh, well I didn't say that. Someone else said that. And I thought that was going to be a really specific detail because that's a lyric to one of his songs. And I was like, oh, piece the two and two together. Wasn't me. I wasn't even disappointed because I was like, I didn't stand a chance anyway. It was a fun three and a half hours of my life wasted. And so, 
jump forward a few days and I was on the way home from my nan and pa's place. We were driving home from somewhere in Melbourne and a notification popped up on my phone. We were on the freeway and I started sobbing my heart out, literally crying, snot, tears, just an emotional wreck. I had just gotten a message from Smallsy saying, congratulations, you're meeting Niall Horan. You guys have seen my reaction to me hearing one of Harry Styles' songs for the first time. You guys have seen my reaction to photos of cute kittens. Like, I overreact to everything. It's just me, it's just what I do, it's just who I am. I just, I'm a very emotionally driven person. Like, if I'm not between a five and a seven on the emotion scale, I'm crying. So when I found out that I was being the boy that I have literally been in love with for the past six years, I was sobbing my heart out. I was crying, I was a wreck, I was just all over the place. Let me try and break this down for you. My reaction to finding out that I was meeting Niall Horan was enough to have my pa, who was a doctor, think that I was in physical pain. I mean, he wasn't wrong. Every part of my body was in pain. I was meeting Niall Horan. I was in pain. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about the entire, like going to Sydney and everything, cause that's another video, that's for another time. Y'all don't care about that. Let's talk about actually meeting him. <sighs> Fast forward two weeks. I was in Sydney, I was at the concert, I'm gonna start crying again. <laughs> I was in Sydney, I was at the concert venue which I had been lining up at since seven o'clock that morning and I was in line to meet Niall. What the heck? I just, I feel like I'm telling someone else's story. Like this stuff just isn't meant to happen, like. What? So basically what happened with winning the prize is not only did you get to meet him, but you also get to go into a sound check beforehand and watch him sound check his songs. And I was literally front and center, like on the barricade. Like I was there. He was like, his microphone was like dead on. I, <sighs> I was standing directly in front of where he was going to be. I was about to see my favorite person face to face in front of me, live in person with no screen blocking us. This was real. This was actually happening. <laughs> and then, oh, calm down. You're cool, calm, collected. Then, he stepped onto the stage. He stepped onto the stage in front of me. And every part of my body kind of just died. But also, I have never felt more alive. <laughs> I could quite literally hear like, those angelic choir noises coming from every direction. It's all a little bit blurry to be honest, but from memory he sang Flicker, Slow Hands, This Town and Mirrors. I cried the whole time. I was a wreck. I was singing along to everything. I was bopping. I was just going for it. I'm awful at concerts. I'm so sorry if any of you ever see me at a concert. If you ever see me at a concert, don't come near me. It will be the worst experience of your life. He noticed me dancing along to slow hands and he giggled and I'm pretty sure my heart spontaneously combusted. Now after sound check, they got us all to line up so we could go and meet him. While we were lining up, I couldn't actually see him with people but you could see the backdrop that they were in front of and it was a literal constant stream. It was just like there was people, someone walk in, someone walk it out. It was just a constant stream of people going in and out. You literally got no time with him at all. It was just boom, 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 go, go, go. Now I was so scared because if I only had like five seconds with him, I knew I was gonna stuff this up. I knew I would need more than five seconds to tell my body to chill out because I knew that I was going to freak out. That's an inevitable thing. I was going to freak out. That was just, that's just how it happens. I was so scared that I was going to stuff up and I was so scared that I was going to say something dumb and I was so scared that in the photo I was going to look like an absolute turd. When other people are nervous, they kind of go quiet and kind of go shy. When I go nervous, I turn into a baby cheater on red cordial. I was already really excited and really nervous just waiting in the line. So I was already starting to jump and get excited and I was like, Talking to whoever would listen to me. Honestly, I was talking to even people that weren't listening to me. There was someone behind me who was literally paying no attention to me and I was just talking to her anyway. I was just, I wanted to talk to people because I was like, if I don't talk to someone, I'll just stress more and I'll just freak out more. So I just need to keep my mouth going. And then saw his team walking up to me and I was stressing out even more. I was like, I'm going to vomit. I'm actually going to vomit on you. All these horrible scenarios were running around in my head. I was so genuinely terrified. So they come up to me and one of them looks at me and kind of smiles and she's like, oh, are you excited? Um, 
silly question. Honestly, probably the silliest question someone could have possibly asked at that stage. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit excited. So the woman laughed and she was like, oh, like how excited are you? I'm like, I have literally been waiting for this moment for six years. There is six years of energy pent up inside of this body right now. You have no idea how excited I am. And she laughed and she was like, make sure you tell him that and make sure to keep that enthusiasm. Are you kidding me? I was going to go through the roof when I met him. Like, you think I was crazy now? Just wait until I actually saw him face to face. Wait until we made eye contact. Do you think this is crazy? You just hold on. I had no choice in the matter. It was a given. My body would kind of just do what it wanted and my head would have no say in it. And then it was my turn to walk in. Security gave me a push and they were like, all right, your turn. And I had a three second pep talk with myself. I said to myself, Chloe, you are going to remain calm. You have waited six years of your life for this moment. Do not stuff this up. And then I walked in and I saw him and he smiled at me. And that whole pep talk was out the window. I have never felt that in my whole life. And I genuinely don't think I will ever feel that again. Like the day of my wedding, the day of my non-existent firstborn child, nothing on that like nothing will ever compare to the happiness and excitement i felt in this moment i don't know how to explain what happened because my head had quite literally turned into that channel on the television where it's just the static fuzz but my legs were moving and the rest of my body kind of just followed and i was like okay we're doing this but then my legs did dumb things and my hands did dumb things and i was jumping and smacking my hands together and like just going crazy i just about threw myself at him and i was so excited and I started trying to apologize because this he didn't want to deal with this he didn't have to deal with someone like me and I was jumping and moving and shaking and so excited I was like I'm so sorry I'm just so excited right now and he he giggled and he looked at me and he just started laughing and oh my god he laughed he laughed Niall Horan giggled at me because of how excited I was and he's like hi okay let's all do this then and then him and his entire team started copying me they all started jumping and shaking and getting excited and I was just I can't I I can't I was literally copied by Niall and his whole security team while I was having a full-on stimming meltdown the fact that he not only responded to it and the fact that he not only was like hey, this is okay, but he was like, actually, let's all copy her. And that kind of made me feel a bit less like a dork. But then after he did that, he physically took me by the shoulders and he's like, you're okay, come here. And he just pulls me into a hug and I, I didn't ask for it. He just hugs me and <laughs> I was having the biggest stimming fit of my entire life and Niall Horan was the one to hug me and calm me down. And by calm, I meant I was physically able to actually let real words out of my mouth rather than just like squeals. I began to apologize for how excited I was. And again, I said, I have six years of pent up energy inside of me right now. I'm so sorry. I'm just so happy and I am so excited. And then he called me cute. He's like, oh, you're so cute. It's okay. I'm so excited too. And then he hugs me again. What is my life? I was still jumping and I was still so excited and I just like, my mouth was running a million miles an hour. You guys can see how fast I talk. Imagine when I'm really excited. Like you physically cannot, it's just a stream. I'm like a hummingbird. It's just, I don't think I made a word of sense the entire time, but he was just like, oh. We got a photo together and the friend that I was with, she asked if we could hold hands and he just grabbed my hand. He linked it. It wasn't just like a normal handhold. He actually linked fingers with me. Afterwards, I thanked him again and I tried to talk again, but I couldn't because I'm an absolute maggot. The girls in the line behind us were starting to kind of get a little bit angry because we had literally been with him for a solid minute, probably longer, and no one else had even got 10 seconds with him. We were just with him for so long. Anyone who's done any meeting group before, you guys know this doesn't happen at all, ever. So anyway, we left and I made the biggest maggot of myself because I left the wrong direction. I was just so, my head was a fuzzball. My head could just not compensate anything at the moment. And I went the wrong way and the security were all giggling at me and they all had their phones out and were like recording and I was just like going the wrong direction. And they're like, oh, like here, take your, you get like a bag, right? You get a bag. And they're like, take your bag. And I'm like, I haven't got a bag. It's like, no, we're giving you a bag. I'm like, why are you giving me a bag? I haven't got one. I don't want to steal anything. Oh, I... <sighs> you know that feeling 
when you feel physically numb, like your entire existence is just like not even there, like you just are a nothing. No? Okay, just me? Well, I felt that. I'm going to sound like one of those annoying, embarrassing fangirls, but I've already made an idiot of myself, so I'll just continue. You know those dreams that you have with you and your favorite celebrity? Not even any of them amounted to what actually happened when I actually met my favorite celebrity. When I got out of the venue, I literally just collapsed on the floor and started sobbing. Like, I was a wreck. I had girls coming up to me that had no idea who I was, who didn't know me, who had never spoken to me before, and they were literally holding me because they could see that I was genuinely just an emotional mess. I was literally a wreck. I had security guards coming up and like giving me water and being like, are you okay? And I, I wasn't okay. I was, I've never been more happy in my entire life. For the actual concert, somehow we ended up at the back barrier. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going on. We weren't meant to be the back barrier, but somehow we were. I was behind a lot of tall people who all had their phones out, and I'm not very short. I'm like five, six. Oh, speaking of my height, a lot of people have been asking me how tall Niall is, because everyone's, like, that's, I don't know why that's the main thing people ask. Um, I'm five, six. I'm thinking, I'm 160 eight centimeters on a good day and he was here on me i'd say he's maybe five seven five eight so if louis thinks he's five nine he's kidding himself anyway as i was saying i was behind all these really really tall people that all had their phones out and i literally couldn't even see him and there was this girl who again i don't know who she was i had never met her before i didn't even get her name and she literally just grabs me and kind of like pushes me in front of her and goes here you deserve this more than i do and i was like this girl doesn't know who I am. This girl, like, she had never seen me before. And she was just like, here, you deserve to see him. And I was like, I'm starting to realize that people are actually really, really nice. And they're not really that awful. And they're not as bad as I used to think they are. <laughs> anyway, the concert was amazing. And it was phenomenal. And it was just crazy good. It was so, so amazing. When I get really emotional and really excited, I need to kind of sit to just let my body do its thing. I literally like was on the ground of the arena. I'll insert a picture here. My friend took a photo of me literally just like passed out in the middle of the arena floor while everyone was leaving. So the security decided to usher everyone out and to make a perfect night perfecter, more perfect, but, but yep. Niall's actual security guard, like not one of Enmore Theatre's ones, Niall's actual security guard comes up to me. He says the most Incredible words of my life. He goes, are you, are you ready for this? He goes, have you heard what Niall's been saying about you? And every part of my body died. My whole life flashed before my eyes. I was like, that's it, Niall hates me. I jumped to worst case scenarios straight away. I know it's bad, I shouldn't do it, but I do. And I was like, oh my God, I've made an idiot of myself. He hates me, I'm gonna go home and just sob and like, what's the point in even being here? What is my life? Before I could start crying, he goes, as soon as you left the meeting greet, Niall turned to all of us and said, that girl's like a little Tasmanian devil. He's been referring to you as Tassie devil to everyone backstage since you left. And after the meeting greet, he said, I wish everyone was like the little Tassie devil. The security guard told me that I was the favorite person that Niall had met. What? What? What the heck? What the heck? What? Oh, I can't even segue that. Like, how can I top that? But I'm about to. I'm about to top that. Hold up. Well, hold your horses, guys. The next day I met him again. I'm going to cry, so I'm going to make this real quick. Trust me when I say a lot of crazy coincidences happened the following day. And all of those crazy coincidences led up to a security guard coming up to a small group of us and asking if we wanted to meet Niall. And part two of the best week of my life had commenced. So about seven of us were let down into this basement. That definitely sounds a lot creepy when I say it out loud. But there was no killer there. There was no psychopathic murderer there. Niall was standing there in the basement of the car park, just in all of his glory. Chloe, I told myself, you are going to behave today. Body, you are going to behave. Chloe, you are going to not make a fool of yourself. You will not freak out and you will behave and act like a fully functional human being. Ugh, why does my body never do what I tell it to? It was my turn to go up and get a photo with him. And he looks over at me. And he goes, there she is. And opened his arms up for a hug. My heart 
heart stopped. It literally stopped. Like, rest in peace, Chloe. This is her ghost. He knew who I was. He remembered me. I wrote him this dumb, stupid letter, which made me look like a 12-year-old girl with a crush on an attractive uni student. And I mumbled out something so stupid as I handed it to him. I wanted to tell him what he's done for me. I wanted to tell him that for so many years I was next to mute. I wanted to tell him that for so long their music and what they have done had been the only comfort that I had. I wanted to say all that to him, but the words couldn't leave my mouth and that's why I wrote this dumb stupid letter. But as I was trying to get the words to come out, he looks at me and he goes, oh, I already know everything. I read it on your Twitter. What? Niall has seen my Twitter. Niall has seen my tweets. Niall has seen the 24 hours of cringeworthy fangirling tweets that I had put up in the spur of the moment as my brain was just like vomiting out all of this stuff. I was so embarrassed that I wanted to cry and I was so excited that I wanted to cry and all I wanted to do was get that dumb stupid letter back off of him that had all of my cringeworthy thoughts in it. And I tried to reach out to take it and he just kind of like held it up so I couldn't retrieve it back. <laughs> and then he took a photo with me and I met my idol twice in the span of like not even 24 hours. That's, who can say that? My idol not only knows I exist, but he's nicknamed me. He's seen my tweets and he knows about autism and he knows about what a massive impact he's had on my life. Not only does my idol know I exist, but he knows what he's helped me through. Even now, the fact that I was having a full-fledged panic attack when I met him and he was totally okay with it and not only was he okay with it, but he helped me through it. And I don't think he realized that he helped me through it. And that's just like really freaking cool, man. <laughs> I guess just in closing, I said this wasn't going to be like a video where you guys are gonna get inspired or anything and it's still not. But I just wanted to say that I was a little girl who spent so many years of my life sitting in my room crying because I thought that I wouldn't be able to do anything. And I spent so long in my room crying because the world didn't understand me. And this week I have gone to Sydney and I have met my idol twice and I have done things that I never thought I'd be able to. And that's just, I don't know, that's really cool. <laughs> and then when I got home, I somehow managed to snag another meet and greet ticket to his concert next June. And I'm meeting my idol three times in less than a year, in like nine months. In the time that it takes a woman to have a baby, this girl is meeting her idol three times. I win. I genuinely am in shock and I genuinely cannot believe that this is my life and that this has happened to me. I genuinely cannot believe that I've had these opportunities and I'm still getting these opportunities. It's just... Crazy, insane, amazing. I don't even know how to finish this. Heck, I didn't even know how to beginning and middle this. Thank you guys so much for the amount of love I have been getting on my Twitter and my Instagram after all of these photos got put up. I have literally already been in newspapers with these stories and these videos and that's just like <laughs> insane. That's so cool. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>